Hi, and welcome back to Gavin Sonics B. Well, the last time I spoke to you um, was just before Christmas, uh, beginning of December, I think it was, uh, when I was hacking the instrument panel to pieces and uh, turning it into uh, a hinged thing. Um, well, it's still in exactly the same place as it was when I spoke to you last. But... I have done a lot of other things. It's now mid-February, so uh, I don't know, probably about 10 weeks has passed. And uh, I have been busy. Um, uh, I got completely and utterly drawn into something which I'm still not sure that uh, I should have really uh, started in the first place. But... Uh, I wanted to, as you probably remember, um, fit out the cockpit effectively with all the little bits and pieces before um, taking the whole thing down to the hangar to carry on. So uh, if you can remember, I left the fuselage uh, in the, um, with the ability to be split so the tail cone can be split from the Ford fuselage cockpit section. Um, so that's what I did um, and uh, decided um, over Christmas to have a go at fitting the plastic side panels into the cockpit. Well, 25 hours and an almost nervous breakdown later i have one side panel in in position and i'm relatively happy not completely happy but relatively happy with how it looks um, it's difficult to see the whole thing at the moment because i have got the two halves of the aircraft separated at the moment but uh, Let's flip the camera around and have a look and see what I did. So the, for those that aren't aware, the kit comes with some ABS um, panels, which uh, can be uh, used or not used. It's up to you. You can make your own if you want. Now, what I the mistake I made was I, I assumed that they actually fitted and <laughs> to be quite honest I can tell you they do not fit as they come uh, they uh, start off life I've got one here that I haven't actually done anything to. So if I get this one out for you, you can see what's going on. Let's try not to drop it on the floor. Let me swing you back round again. Right, so what comes is this. Um, it's basically a vacuum formed by the looks of it, ABS uh, panel. And this one says, right hand main side panel. Now, on one of the drawings, uh, it will be F05 by the looks of it, yep. On one of the drawings, there are some very rudimentary, um, help you go in the right direction uh, instructions on how to cut this um, initially to start off. Well, I wouldn't suggest you do that, um, <laughs> because what I did was um, had a look at the panel, then had a look at the what we're trying to fit it to, which is that bit there and that bit there, and decided that that cutting guide was not really right. So what I actually did was... Uh, cut a little piece off it at a time going around seeing where it fitted where it didn't fit um, trying to understand how it was going to sit in and fit onto the aircraft then decided that actually there's nothing to fix it to 
um, apart from the top longer on. So uh, then decided to make some brackets. So um, let me swing you back round again. This is where the rear part of the panel comes in. And I have fitted a bracket there, another bracket there, and another bracket there to fix the rear end onto. And the panel here is actually in two pieces. If I take the clips off a second, there's another one there. We've got, we've got this piece of panel and we've got the other piece which won't come off at the moment because it, it fits over the throttle um, assembly and uh, unless you take the throttle handle off you can't get it back off again anyway. Um, but underneath here I have also fitted um, another bracket there, um, another one here, and uh, I think there's one up here as well. Um, basically to give you something to screw it back to. Um, what you have to bear in mind is that there's this long bent piece that runs right the way across it it's like a channel on the other side and that is what your rudder um, cable goes down so basically the rudder cable comes out of the rear fuselage through this hole here and then passes down the channel around here and then through here and pops out underneath the uh, the brake uh, master cylinder there and off to the rudder pedal so uh, i spent far 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 too much time on cutting those two little panels um i say probably 25 hours uh, of trying a bit, cutting another bit off, making a bracket, trying it again, um, to try and get something that looked right, um, that uh, looked as if it was supposed to be there and actually fitted. Um, and it is possible, but it does take a bit of effort. It probably would have been easier if I had uh, started off with a piece of board and made my own. Uh, but uh, it was a challenge and uh, it'll look nice when it's finished, I'm sure. Um, I've also decided that I might um, utilise the little space that is left between the uh, panel and the outside of the aircraft. And basically, you've got a, a space here an inch deep behind the plastic panel, which isn't being used. And I thought, well, Surely I can get a little pocket in there or something. So I like um, Leerdammer cheese. I don't know whether they have that in the United States or not, but it's a um, it's an Emmental Edam style sliced cheese that uh, you buy in the supermarket. And uh, just by chance, an Emmental container of which I have one here Leodama there it is is an inch deep and it's made out of really light um, plastic and so I thought if I discard oh, discard the lid I've then got a container which I can then spray black from the back so it's nice and shiny on the inside and that can go in here like that, or possibly up the other way, I don't know really, one way or the other, or horizontally, maybe. And then if I cut a slot in the side panel, I'll then be able to drop 
a few bits and pieces in there like I don't know uh, well what would we need uh, a checklist for instance that could live in there couldn't it or a map or I don't know something at least that'll give you a little bit of space just to drop uh, drop something in. I did a similar thing, uh, which is what made me think about it, on the uh, car that I built. Um, I um, put two little one pocket either side in the door and used up the space that was uh, left between the um, finishing panel and the outside of the door. So probably going to do that. Um, haven't done it yet. Um, so. That really took me right the way through Christmas. Obviously, Christmas is a difficult time. You've got to talk to family, go out and get drunk with friends, buy presents, eat too much, which I definitely did and put on a lot of weight, drink far too much, which I always do anyway. And uh, so there wasn't much time for doing anything else. So that kind of kept me amused every time I got bored of what was on the television or lost the will to live with uh, the people who were around the house. I came in here and spent an hour, half an hour, two hours fiddling around with a piece of bent plastic. So that's all I really had to show for the best part of a month, which is ridiculous really. But anyway, I'm there now and I can reproduce it on the other side. It looks as if it's going to work. I've got all the fixings and things that I need to secure it. Um, it all makes sense to me. Um, can't really finish it off because uh, I need to drill more holes in the, uh, the top long runs for the canopy and I don't know where they're going to go. So there's no point in me uh, going any further, but at least I know how it's going to fit together. I know it is going to fit together and uh, I'm reasonably satisfied with the results. Um, so uh, that's where we are with that. And uh, with that, we'll take a slight recess and I'll be back with you in a minute once I've gathered a few bits and pieces together to show you what else I've been doing. See you in a minute. So after having messed around a piece of plastic that I haven't actually finished and took me all that time over Christmas, I then <laughs> threw it to one side and thought I'd better get on with actually doing something because I want to finish this aircraft and fly it. So uh, the next thing I was looking at was basically uh, kitting out the um, cockpit area. And I wanted to do this um, before uh, going any further with the general assembly of the aircraft because I want to make life easy for myself to get access to all these places um, so whilst it's split in two um, I can work on it relatively easily and uh, the next thing I looked at was the rudder pedals because um, they're right up the front and uh, once the fuel tank is in position and the uh, or rather once the glare shield is in position and the fuel tank uh, is underneath that uh, there's really no way of getting at the uh, rudder uh, pedal assembly unless you crawl in underneath everything and i don't want to do that so um to fit the uh, rudder pedals you need to make some things and these are not supplied in the kit they give you the material to make them but you need to make the actual blocks that the um, the two um, rudder pedal assemblies um, insert into and rotate around in for want of a better description. So uh, I'll swap you around and you can have a look at the one on the left side of the cockpit. Here we go. So the two rudder pedal assemblies are running from one side of the cockpit. I'm standing roughly where the engine is looking aft at the moment. And uh, the pivot blocks are made out of phenolic 
um, which is a really weird material. Um, and to cut it, it's very hard. Um, to cut it, you really need to use a bandsaw and woodworking tools. And I don't really do wood. So uh, I have a good friend who lives just down the road who is into wood. And so I gave him the drawing and the material and said, can you make me two sets of uh, these? And he did. And they're pretty good. Um, there's the other one. Um, they're bolted um, up onto the bracketry on the side panels there. And uh, the only the, the hardest thing of it all was actually stripping the paint, which you have to do, off of the uh, rudder pedal um, assembly units. They're, they're steel, uh, welded steel, and uh, they're... Uh, must be polyester coated or something like that um, but to uh, to get them to work properly um, uh, the, the tube that they're made out of is inch and uh, the holes obviously that are drilled in the phenolic are inch but with the powder coating on they're obviously bigger so you have to strip the powder coating off and that was the well, tedious um, thing to do, um, to do it without wrecking the entire thing. Um, the first time I did it, I was far too accurate and uh, I cleared the, the plastic off uh, very accurately so that the paint uh, went right up to the block. Don't do that because I did that and uh, to be quite honest, it kept jamming. Um, so when you clear it off, make sure you clear it off a few millimetres or an eighth of an inch or so um, more than you need um, so that it doesn't foul on the uh, phenolic block. Um, and uh, they work, work reasonably well. It took a little bit of um, fine tuning, a little bit of um, sanding. Uh, also, I beveled the edges of the holes slightly as well because uh, this one in particular is up against a welded component and it's not a perfect uh, corner recess in there that it fits against. So um, a bit of uh, a chamfer around the edge of the hole um, helps it in. but. Uh, relatively straightforward and simple task if you've got a good friend who can make the blocks for you in the first place. Then I had a look at the braking system and the reason I had a look at the braking system you think well you don't need the brakes at the moment you've got no legs on it got no wheels why are you messing around with the braking system? Well the master cylinder sits on the left hand side adjacent to the pilot and you have to bend up this lovely brake handle and assemble it onto the master cylinder and assemble that onto a bracket and assemble that onto uh, the side panel. And uh, the pipes, obviously, or the pipe obviously goes away from here. This is the, um, effectively the, the handbrake uh, 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 lever uh, so that you can lock the brakes on. So. Uh, Normally it would be like this, then you put the brake on and then whilst you've got the brake handle pulled backwards you would lock it off with the stopcock there. Anyway, the pipe goes away and then goes into a T right down in the corner down there and one pipe goes down the leg um, uh, on one side to the left hand wheel and then the other uh, pipe coming out the T goes right the way across the bottom cross member there and down through a hole in the floor over there. Now you've got to drill those holes and you also need some little holes in the cross member to put some cable ties on to cable tie the pipe down to. There's the pipe and there's the T. I've already pre-cut it all to, uh, to you know, uh, generous length. And the reason I've done that is, again, for access, to drill those holes down in those corners there is easy now. 
um, but won't be later on and to drill the holes across there is easy now but won't be later on so I've installed the master cylinder and drilled the holes measured everything up and uh, I know how I'm going to do that the next job I did was look at the control stick and uh, I had a couple of goes at putting this together uh, initially um, I found that number one these two bronze bearings that were um, supposed to be in the kit um, somebody had put the wrong size ones in it was marked up correctly on the uh, on the box but the actual bearings were the wrong size so um, I had to order uh, a pair of bearings um, which I can only get from the UK um, actually here and uh, they took a while to arrive also there are a couple of bronze bearings right down at the bottom and uh, they were too short um, really um, so I ordered a replacement pair of those and as I said in the previous video the bronze bearings for the um, elevator push rods were also too short and um, they are supposed to go through the um, the end of the push rod and protrude and then you cut them back so that you end up with nominally ten thousandths of an inch sticking out um, to give some separation between uh, the uh, rod and um, the bit that it's attached to um, uh, but they were too short and didn't actually protrude out of the hole at all so um, ordered some of those as well that took a while for those bits to come uh, I also had a problem in that these um, fixings for the uh, the main sort of pivot um, the, this um, aileron uh, action effectively they are taper bolts and uh, I've never come across those before they're not very much used in uh, the EU um, in Europe at all um, and uh, just as a lot of things, uh, American taper bolts have a different taper to uh, to a, uh, an English one or a European one, and um, I found it almost well impossible to actually buy the taper drills to uh, drill the holes out. So I had to improvise a little bit. Um, I got uh, English ones, which are close but not perfect and then had to finish out the the holes um, by hand um, to get the you know the, the taper correct effectively um, it took a long time uh, but I did it and they have locked up nicely and uh, there's no slop in the thing at all um, I've made a decision that I'm not going to originally I was going to use the Y yoke um, on the control stick uh, but having actually put it in my hand and sort of sat in the chair watching TV um, thinking about how it feels there was just something wrong <laughs> I don't know what it just it did not feel right and uh, so I'm opting to go with the straight control stick and I've ordered a Ray Allen um, stick sleeve with a radio button in the top to go on there and that should be here in the next few days hopefully. Um, assembly wise um, it all went together quite, uh, quite well. Um, I didn't bother with the taper bolt. Uh, it wasn't there wasn't one supplied in the kit anyway. These two were supplied in the kit, but there wasn't one for here. It does call for one on the um, on the updated uh, plans, but to be quite honest, unless you're using the Y stick, there is no rotational um, effort on this at all. 
and to be quite honest this tube is an incredibly tight fit in there anyway and uh, effectively what I've done to put it in there is I've sweated it on so I've warmed this up put it in let it cool down um, with the bolt in situ and then tightened it up afterwards and that is not coming out of there in a hurry I have yet to drill the hole to get the lead out but anyway um, it feels good uh, I've got the elevator the short elevator uh, push rod on there at the moment and when we pull backwards and forwards on the control stick we've got movement there there's no play there's no flop everything is smooth but tight if you know what I mean I'm quite pleased with it it's worked out really well um, that's about all there is to say about that uh, and that's about it oh yes we've fitted the left hand throttle um, on there uh, the right hand one I've yet to do and uh, I can't do that until I start to do the work on the panel because they actually fit or they to, to look right they need to fit nice and snugly together so positioning this is actually got to be positioned relative to that so you need to have that cut and fitted before you fit this because uh, if the total assembly is too far out it won't fit under there if it's too far in there'll be a big gap if it's too high it won't fit in between the the, the two sides um so it, it's all interrelated and uh, they have to be fitted together to be quite honest um and that's about all for the... Oh no, there's another bit. Hold on a second, I'll be back in two ticks. Of course, the other bit I've been working on, um, and it's not quite all there yet, but it's getting there, it's the fuel tank. So there is the fuel tank. Um, it's a 20 US gallon, 75 litres fuel tank. Um, uh, it's a seamless construction, and... Uh, Basically, you have to cut your way into it. Um, it comes with a pre-made, pre threaded and fitted filler cap. But apart from that, there were no holes in it. So you have to actually cut three holes. I've cut two so far. Uh, well, the minimum is three. Um, most uh, people, I think, probably use the fuel... Uh, gauge sensor if they use one at all from Sonics and that is one that fits in the bottom of the fuel tank um, through a uh, through a, a, a tank fitting basically I didn't like the idea of that um, uh, particularly in a um, stressful situation uh, crashing on the floor uh, ground or something um, a cart wheeling down the runway or whatever uh, so I've opted to have one in the top of the tank which means I've got to cut a hole in the glare shield uh, to accommodate it um, and this is one from MGL uh, I have MGL uh, EMS unit um, the RDAC so that will be uh, connected to that um, and uh, relatively straightforward installation uh, need to cut a hole um, it needs to be bolted down to the uh, top of the tank um, I've used um, plastic washers underneath the heads of the stainless steel screws and then a tightly fitting o-ring around the thread on the kind of theory that if any fuel finds its way up the thread that it can't get out through the top um, I'm not planning on turning the aircraft upside down too often uh, <laughs> although Katie might um, 
So uh, it's bolted down um, with five M5 bolts um, and uh, cork gasket seal, very similar to uh, the, the type used on a car fuel, or an old sort of classic car fuel tank. Um, and then that projects right down to the bottom of the fuel tank. Uh, the second hole you need to cut in it is to get the fuel out. And there's the oops fitting in the bottom of the uh, tank. It's got a little well that it sits in, um, very small well. And then in that I've got uh, threaded into it uh, the first piece is a strainer which sticks up into it um, a wire strainer and then there's a, uh, a, a quarter nipple there and a stopcock now i've um denied about how to put this stopcock in um, but i've come to the conclusion that this is probably the best way i don't want it so that anybody can kick the thing off whilst I'm travelling along. I don't, don't mind them kicking it on, but off would be bad. So when this is on, I've got it set so it's vertical like that and completely out of the way. And off is pretty obvious um, down across the passenger um, side. Uh, so hopefully that'll that'll work. Um, I haven't sealed them in yet, but they're just sitting there approximately where they're going to be. And then there's going to be a 90 degree bend coming out of there and the fuel line will go on to the firewall. Um, I think the filter I will put on the other side of the firewall, I think. Probably the best place for it. The fewer um, joints you have internally in here, the better. I think um, and if I could get away with less than I've got I would um, and the third hole which I haven't cut yet needs to go up here for the breather pipe um, and I forgot all about it and uh, it's next on my list to do is to stick the breather pipe fitting in the top then it needs a good clean out with some water because it's now full of swarf and then uh, in line with the new latest revision of uh, preparing your fuel tank instructions from sonics once the aircraft the glare shield is on and the uh, fuel tank is installed permanently um, and uh, everything's where it should be they need to put some fuel in it and allow it to expand for six weeks or so it grows approximately three percent um, there have been a number of iterations of instructions on how to do this uh, the, the latest is fit the tank then put the fuel in it um, previously it was put the fuel in it first then fit it but that did sound rather dangerous to me but anyway um, so that's what we're going to do with that and so that's the uh, the the fuel tank and obviously once the glare shield is fitted uh, that's pop riveted onto the top long runs. Uh you can't get at this anymore so whatever you're going to do to it do it now <laughs> so that's really what I've been doing with the uh, with the cockpit area um, it's mostly done uh, I have yet to fit the passenger right hand throttle uh, unit but as I said I can't really do that until I do the side panel as well and then there's the trim unit which is going up here but the mechanism uh, is driven through a cable which pops along here and pops in through here and acts on the uh, elevator push rod um, so I'm going to do that work now um, so that uh, I can uh, get that out of the way before 
putting everything together and then not having any access to it. So that's basically where I'm at with the, uh, with the cockpit at the moment. Um, and it's looking good. I'm quite pleased everything's fitting. Um, it's looking as if it's <laughs> almost <laughs> flyable. Uh, one of the next things I've got to do is actually put the rudder cables on. There are two plates that have to be made which join the cables onto the uh, pedals and you can't actually make those uh, until you've joined the aircraft together and you've got the cables in because they have to be made to fit the aircraft and the cables effectively so every Sonics is different in that respect. Um, also there are some um, springs to go up up there for the rudder pedals as well centering springs so got those to do as well so that's where I am with the cockpit at the moment and uh, I'll leave it there for this video because it's probably well uh, enough and then I'm going to do another video all about what I've been doing to the tail cone which is quite a lot so as you can see I haven't just been sitting around doing nothing I have actually been working on it but it's all little jobs um, uh, you know an hour here or half an hour there and as I say there's a whole load I've done to the uh, the rear of the aircraft as well um, in involving uh, fitting electronics and uh, working out cable routes and more plastic cutting and making brackets for things and working out where I'm going to put stuff um, and uh, I'll cover that in the next video which will be coming out in uh, in a day or two because uh, I've done it all I just need to tell you about it. So, from me at uh, Gavin Sonics B, Happy New Year. It's a bit late, but uh, there we go. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to finish this uh, project this year. Um, so, we'll keep our fingers crossed and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.